Greetings everyone. My name is Amy and I'm here to share with you today about leftovers. <laughs> uh, before I start talking about the topic, I would like to just open with a word of prayer. So if you're joining me live or if you're listening to the recording, please um, bow your head with me and um, let's just say a word of prayer. So, thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we come before you today. We come before you in this moment, in these next few moments of turning toward you, of hearing from your word and hearing the message that you have for us today. Lord, I open my heart and my mind to um, receive what you have for me to share today. I thank you for what you've already shown me. And as I share, I pray that you will just guide my words, that you will just guide my thoughts as I share with those who are listening today. Thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So um, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for um, just being here and um, you know I just want to bless you today God bless you for um, making the choice to turn to him and to tune in and listen you know not just you but other people who are sharing on this page um, sharing what God's put on their hearts so bless you as you listen as you um, share in the comments we hope that um, you will be blessed. I trust that you will be blessed. So leftovers. <laughs> I want to talk about leftovers today. You know, this topic came to my mind because uh, of the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And so I want to read that for us now. Um, and I'm going to read the version that is in Matthew. Matthew chapter 14. Um, so if you're um, tuning in, listening live, or to the recording, either way, if you're in a place where you can uh, open your Bible to Matthew 14, please follow along with me. Um, you know, before I read that, I just want to also just kind of talk about leftovers a little bit. Like, what are leftovers anyway? <laughs> um, well, usually um, leftovers we're referring to food that's extra, right? We're referring to uh, a meal, you know, we have a meal and then there's not enough room in our bellies, right? So there's more food than we can eat. Or maybe we don't have as many people as we thought and so we have extra food. I know here in the US, um, we're not that far away from Thanksgiving. It's only in another uh, month and a half. But, you know, this is a time when traditionally we purposely make a lot of food. We make a huge amount of food. We know ahead of time that there's going to be leftovers. And that's part of the fun of our Thanksgiving Day meal is that we know there's going to be these leftovers and it's so um, it's enjoyable to eat the leftovers in the following days <laughs> so usually we're talking about extra food right so another way that we sometimes think of leftovers or refer to leftovers is sometimes um, let's say a person is so busy and so um, you know, their, their schedule is so packed that by the time they get home, they're exhausted. They don't have anything left over, any energy left over for their family, right? So sometimes we refer to leftovers in a negative, con you know, there's a negative connotation to it where we're saying, hey, all I have is these leftovers and there, there's not many of them to give, right? <laughs> um, and so, you know, that's 
that's another story. <laughs> that's another um, area of our lives that we want to be paying attention to. We want to make sure that we have energy left over, right? And when we rely on God to help us prioritize and to help us, um, you know, invest our energy according to his wisdom, according to his will, um, then I pray that he will bless you with leftover energy as well. That um, it won't just apply to food, but it will apply in our relationships and in all areas of our lives that we would have the abundant blessing of the Lord and have leftovers <laughs> in all these areas. You know, really, that's when I mentioned the word abundance that's what leftovers are all about, right? It's it's having more than enough. The fact that there's more than enough, and then we have to decide what to do with the extra, with the leftovers. So let's read this passage. You know, I'm actually going to read two passages because they happen right in a row. Matthew 14, and then I'm going to jump over to Matthew 15. But in chapter 14, I'm going to start with verse 13, okay? So it's Matthew 14, starting with verse 13. As soon as Jesus heard the news, John, uh, and the news that they're referring to is that John had just been beheaded, um, his cousin John. He just had been given the news that that had happened and that his cousin was dead. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. The disciples replied, but we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. <laughs> Bring them here, Jesus said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples, who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. All right, so very cool um, miracle, right? Most of us are probably familiar with this. Uh, and then I want to just read um, in the next chapter, a very similar thing happens again. Okay, so this is in Matthew 15, verse 32, is where I'm going to start reading. Then Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days, and they have nothing left to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, or they will faint along the way. The disciples replied, Where would we get enough food here in the wilderness? For such a huge crowd. Jesus asked, How much bread do you have? They replied, Seven loaves and a few small fish. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to the disciples who distributed the food to the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven large baskets of leftover food. 
there were 4,000 men who were fed that day in addition to the women and children. Praise the Lord for these stories. It's such, such an amazing story to read, right? And um, from what I can tell, it was only a couple days apart, if that, you know, it was like a few days later <laughs> that it says the second story happened, the second time where this large crowd was fed. And I have to wonder if it didn't happen more times, you know, maybe it happened other times and it didn't get recorded by those who were writing the, the scriptures. But in any case, you know, we have these two uh, stories right in a row, two very similar stories of a huge amount of people being fed from a very small amount of food at the beginning. And lots of times when we're reading this story, that's the miracle that we're focusing in on, is the fact that with so little, God can do so much. <laughs> and it's so amazing. Uh, it truly is. Um, the leftovers part, I didn't think about very often. But, you know, I thought about it more within the last couple of years because, um, you know, there's just been times in my life where I realized there was this extra, there was this leftover blessing in my life that I still haven't um, counted. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, we say the phrase, Count your blessings, right? That's a song. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Um, and, you know, when we experience a time in our life of overflowing blessings, it's like we can't even count them, right? We can't even count all the blessings because there's so much and so many. Um, they're left over, right? They're left over. Um, and so, you know, one thing I noticed in this in both of these passages is that in both cases there was a lot of leftovers <laughs> it says in the first passage that there were 12 baskets of leftovers and then in the second passage it says there were seven large baskets <laughs> so i don't know how big the baskets were but you know i just kind of have this picture in mind of, you know, when they say it, a large basket, um, I've seen pictures and, you know, maybe it's because I have a visual in my mind from movies that have been made from the Bible stories, but, you know, I picture like one of those large baskets that's almost as big as a person, <laughs> you know, um, like think about when, um, in the story about Paul, when he escaped from the city in the basket, right? It's a basket that a person could fit inside of. <laughs> so I don't know for sure, right? It doesn't actually say the exact size, but it says large. <laughs> so that makes me think, you know, these were pretty large baskets and, you know, pretty big and not just like a small basket. You know, that's what I often would think of as a basket is something small, but it specifically says it was large. And so, you know, my mind, goes to those really huge ones that a person could fit in. And I think it's really cool that, you know, in a crowd like that, um, the disciples took the time to go through and collect the leftovers. And it reminds me of this idea of counting our blessings. They went through the crowd. I mean, it's a lot of people, right? Uh, 5,000 men in the first story and 4,000 men in the second story. You know, probably at least twice that many people because it says in addition there were women and children. Hard to say how many, right? Maybe twice, maybe three times the amount of people that's actually listed here. So huge, huge crowd. Imagine the time that it took to walk around, <laughs> collect the leftovers, right? Um, 
it's not just that they had it there and they hadn't given it out, right? It says that they picked up seven large baskets of leftover food. And in the first one, it says they picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. So what that means to me is that they were going around and checking with people to see if there was extra, right? They were walking around collecting the extra in these baskets. And wow, like how much was left over. So Jesus didn't just feed everyone until they were full, right? This is where the abundance comes into play again. To think about that again, just the amazing abundance of our God of how he provides for us. He doesn't just give us just a little snack. <laughs> he doesn't give us just as much as we need. He gives us more than we need. He gives us abundantly more <laughs> than we could ever think or ask. So I hope you are blessed by that, um, by that picture of abundance and that picture of going around, the disciples going around and collecting the leftovers, uh, collecting the blessings. And so the encouragement for you and I is what about in our own lives? Like I said before, there's been a time, several times in my life where I experienced rich, rich blessing in my life. What about you? Has there been a time that you can think of where he not only met your needs, but he blessed you above and beyond what you asked for? Maybe a time when your heart was just overflowing with gratitude, thankfulness for the, the miracles or the blessings that God has provided in your life. I want to just share very briefly about a time in my life um, when this happened. And um, I wrote a book last year. Um, this book is called He Never Stops Working. It probably looks backwards on your screen. But um, in chapter 12 of my book, uh, let me see if I can get it to show correctly. Um, it's called Leftover Baskets of Provision. So I just wanted to share for a minute or so about this chapter and why I called it that. Um, you know, my book, it's not just my book, it's God's book. Um, my son Javasa and I wrote this book together because it's the story of how God supplied, provided, for our needs, supplied what we needed in abundance. <laughs> you know, we still have not counted all the blessings and all the miracles that happened in my life, in my husband's life, in Sebastian's life. There's so many, so many little miracles. And when we started realizing them, we started counting them, right? We started to uh, write them down and collect the leftovers, right? Um, so we spent one week, I spent one week in the town of Chennai with Jabasin, getting to know him and learning about where he lives and um, learning more, uh, met more of the people and his family there, and um, such a blessing, right? It was such a blessing. The week was packed full of overflowing blessings and gratitude for this time that we got to experience in our lives. And then when I got home, and afterwards, right, afterwards when we we're reflecting on this amazing week and all that God did <laughs> through that week, during that week. He did so much in our hearts and in our lives during that time that it was hard to comprehend it all and it still is. 
it's still hard to um, understand everything and um, but we started writing down some of the story right that's that's what the book is all about it's it's the story of of what God had has done in our lives but this chapter in particular what I said here is that um, you know, I'm just going to read you this, this passage because I think it just really fits here. And, and this was the scripture passage that came to my mind when I wrote this chapter. So I said, like the young boy in the book of Matthew, I had given my fishes and loaves, and the Lord multiplied them for his plan and his purposes. I did what I could given the circumstances in my life at the time. And God did what I could not do. He took my efforts and he compounded them. He used me to impact Jebastian's life more than I could have imagined. And he's using Jebastian to impact my life more than he ever thought possible. We are still collecting the leftover baskets of his provision for our lives and learning how to share them with others. So God is working, right? He is always working in our lives. He's always producing this abundance, providing this abundance for us. It's up to us to notice it, right? It's we have to become more aware. We have to decide to tune in, <laughs> to turn to God, to ask him to open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see the abundant blessings, so that we can see um, the miracles, the abundance of miracles and blessings, and not only see them, but count them, right? Make note of them. Be intentional to jot these things down as God brings them to your awareness. You know, as you ask for awareness, he's going to give you awareness. So write those down in a journal or just a notebook. Um, or if you're more of an electronic person, you know, keep a blog. I don't know. In some way, shape, or form, document the things, the blessings and the miracles that God is showing you. You know, the importance of this is because um, later when we experience a difficulty and we're just overflowing with blessings and we can't um, even count all the, the amazing things, right? But then life still just keeps going on, right? And life is full of ups and downs hills and valleys. So when we get to a valley, we have to have those leftovers, right? We have the leftovers to remember and to reflect on and to remind ourselves of the faithfulness, the goodness of God, the abundant supplier of all our needs. We can remind ourselves of who God is and how he provides for us. We can hang on to those precious memories and experiences, um, keep them in these baskets in your mind. You know, think about your journal and read over the things that you had written previously. And it will be like looking through the basket of left. Experiencing that blessing again, reminding yourself of those blessings again. And you know, when we think back, when we remind ourselves, we know that God is faithful. We know that he will provide and uh, meet our needs, whatever those needs are. He's not surprised, right? He's not surprised. So we offer him what we have, and he multiplies it. He does these miracles of compounding our efforts beyond what we could ever do. And not only that, but he provides these leftovers for us 
to collect and to keep with us and to look back on and reflect on so that we can be encouraged in times when we're facing a challenge or facing a difficulty. Um, and I wanted to also just read in closing here in chapter 16, just going to turn there quickly here. In chapter 16, this is again a few days later, but there's another time when they're, the disciples are talking about bread. <laughs> so I'm just going to read this quickly and I'm going to close. But it says, um, Jesus said to them, or I'm sorry, I'm going to start in verse 5. Okay, so this is Matthew 16, verse 5. Later, after they crossed to the other side of the lake, the disciples discovered that they had forgotten to bring any bread. Watch out, Jesus warned them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. At this, they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread. Jesus knew what they were saying, so he said, You have so little faith. Why are you arguing with each other about having no bread? Don't you understand? Don't you remember the 5,000 I fed with five loaves and the baskets of leftovers you picked up? Or the 4,000 I fed with seven loaves and the large baskets of leftovers you picked up? Why can't you understand? Okay, so Jesus is reminding the disciples. He's saying, don't you remember <laughs> how I provided? How I provided for all that anyone could ever want to eat? <laughs> and there were leftovers, right? He's saying, don't you remember? So the encouragement for us today is to remember, <laughs> to remind yourself to keep track right ask god to remind you of the miracles and the blessings that he has done in your life i know it blesses my heart when i think about the blessings and the miracles that have happened over the years in my life and there's been many times so think over that for yourself and may that bless you today as you think about the leftovers. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you today. I am so, so grateful for the leftovers. I'm so, so grateful for your abundant supply for all my needs. I thank you for each person who is listening, and I thank you for the abundant supply that you have for each of their needs. You are not surprised by any of the needs that they have in their life. Whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, any kind of need, a need in their family, a need in their workplace, you know all of our needs before we could even tell you what they are. You already know them. And you are already working out a plan to provide for every need and not only to meet the need but to have abundant supply with leftovers and we thank you for that we thank you for the leftovers we thank you for the blessings and the miracles that we can document and collect in the basket of our mind or the basket of our journal so that we can remind ourselves in those times when we're having a struggle, that we can remind ourselves of your faithfulness and your abundant provision. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.